In the earliest dawn of our world's vast history, where legends whisper and truth intertwines with myth, the roots of a profound lineage took hold. From the ancient loins of Jacob, the patriarch who wrestled with angels, sprouted a lineage destined to reach across millennia. Among these seeds of greatness was Erie, son of Gad, who would father a line of people whose tales are woven into the rich tapestry of human endeavor. These are the Igbo, whose echoes of ancient Israel can still be discerned in the throb of their drums and the songs of their hearts. This is not merely a tale of bloodlines. It is a chronicle of resilience, the perseverance of a culture which, through tribulation and triumph, has clung tightly to a legacy stretching back to the dawn of tradition. As we unravel their narrative, we bear witness to an oculus through which the soul of a people shines, a beacon for understanding identity in its most profound sense. Join us on this solemn pilgrimage into the past as we tread softly on the hallowed grounds of ancestry, exploring an odyssey that reverberates from the ancient sands of Padanaram to the thriving communities of the present-day Igbo. It is here, in this ancestral voyage, that we discover the enduring spirit which propels the Igbo forward, a zest for life fused with a veneration for roots as old as time itself. As dawn pierced the horizon over the land shadowed by pyramids, a lineage of Jacob, a family of Gad, took their first steps into freedom. Among them, Eri, nurtured by hopes yet undefined, embarked on a journey destined to become legend. Across the sands of Sinai, beneath a canvas of shifting stars, they journeyed by night, led by pillars of fire and cloud. This band of erstwhile slaves cast off the shackles of Pharaoh's reign, their weary feet etching a path through wilderness and into the annals of history. As mana fell and water sprang from stone, Ares' heart pounded with a rhythm that resonated beyond the immediate deliverance. He sensed a fate greater than Canaan's milk and honey, a destiny that whispered of distant shores, of a future people that would herald his name. With every step away from captivity, Eri and his kin bore the weight of freedom's promise and the burden of an ancient heritage that heralded challenges anew. Theirs was an exodus, not just from bondage, but toward a covenant renewed upon soil they had yet to tread, a covenant that would reach across time to embrace their descendants in a land far beyond the ken of Moses' promised rest. Amidst the divinely inspired verses of the Holy Bible, within its august leaves of wisdom and prophecy, the mention of Eerie is fleeting, a soft echo of a name that pricks the curiosity and beckons for exploration into the shadows of prehistory. His inclusion among the descendants of Gad serves as a signpost to a tale that refuses to be fully told within these sacred bound pages. What secrets does his legacy hold? What chronicles, potent with the force of tradition and ancestry, have been muted by the passing of countless generations? It seems scripture merely casts a spotlight on the threshold of an extraordinary journey and then invites us to plunge into the uncharted depths where faith and myth intertwine. It is here, within this enigmatic silence, that Ares' path continues, a root etched into the very marrow of his progeny, whispering of adventures and trials, unrecorded by scribes, resonating through time, and awaiting the voice of posterity to grant it form once more. When the last echoes of Ares' name faded from the scriptures, the tale of his lineage took flight upon the wings of legend and oral tradition. Out from under the scrutinizing eye of the documented word, a bold tapestry of heritage unraveled across lands untold. Entwined with kin like Areli and Arodi, Ari ventured beyond the veil of history into profound allegiances with kindred souls, kindling an alliance with the enigmatic Oduduwa. Their communion marked the mingling of bloodlines that would alter destinies forever. As siblings under a shared sky, this caraval of disparate origins gathered from ancient Near Eastern vistas to chart a course into the shadowed heart of the unknown, 
Theirs was a pact sealed in the spirit of exploration and unity, cultures converging, ideas flourishing, and histories interweaving to compose a new chapter in human chronicles. With whispers of divine guidance in their ears and the pulse of adventure quickening their step, they embraced the perilous freedom before them. Drifting further away from established roots, they entered regions where no scribe's ink could capture their journey's essence. Their footprints pressed upon earth untouched by the chronicles of empires. They were the cartographers of their own tale. Here, in the interstices between what was known and what was yet to be discovered, Eri and his companions bore witness to the dawning of a myth, a narrative to be passed through generations. In an ambitious endeavor to stitch together the disjoined threads of history, we journey to the heartlands of Yoruba land tracing the contours of Ares' odyssey in contemporary folds. It is there that the figure of Odudua looms, a patriarch whose legacy converges with that of Eri through a shared lineage, discernible in the customs and wisdom of their peoples. The Ijebu, renowned for their mercantile prowess, embody echoes that resonate with the tenacity and entrepreneurial spirit attributed to Ares' descendants. Moreover, queries emerge, probing at the core of intertwined destinies. Within the bustling markets and hallowed groves of Oka Eri, named with a whisper of Eri's own, could the lingering presence of his lineage be palpably felt? Investigations delve into marital unions, ancient settlements, and enduring lore that suggest a complex tapestry of interconnected sagas. Like tributaries joining in a great confluence, these histories pave a route back through the annals of time, implicating a bond that transcends mere coincidence. The Yoruba and Igbo, hence intertwined, shine light upon the kinship networks of old. Symbols and signets that propose a familial bond, sealed not only by trade, but by shared identity, etched in time's grand narrative. The questions posed sculpt an imbroglio of kinship and culture, a bridge extending over eras where memories rest within the spoken tales of aged elders and the unyielding spirit of the people. As the vestiges of past alliances surface, they beg revelation of a story larger than itself, one whereby the histories of erstwhile disparate tribes converge to sing a harmonious chorus echoing Ares' indomitable legacy. In the quiet recesses of history, whispered only through the leaves of oral tradition, and stirring within the soul's deepest chambers, lies Shechenigbo, an evanescent name, seemingly lost like an ancient echo, yet stirring the depths of Igbo origin tales. Innocent Okorie, a man enraptured by celestial visions, became a conduit for a revelation so profound it reached back through millennia. In his sacred communion, Yeshua himself imparted to Okorie that the roots of the Igbo stretched far beyond the rich soils of modern Nigeria, plunging into the hallowed earth of Judea. This divine insight wove an incredible tapestry, linking the fate of a people to the heritage of Israel, a heritage obscured by dust-laden epochs, yet enduring as the stars. This enigmatic origin posed questions as unfathomable as they were compelling. How does a people reconcile the legacy born upon dreams and spiritual intimations with the tangible history written upon earth and stone? Through Okori's revelations, the past spoke anew, inviting seekers to trace the steps of a lineage, not solely chronicled in texts and artifacts, but perpetuated by the undying embers of faith. The journey before them is immense, as much a pilgrimage of spirit as it is one of discovery. An ascent to the apogee where identity and ancestry converge, revealing a truth that is not merely academic, but vibrantly alive within the beat of every Igbo heart. Innocent Okoria, steeped in divine rapture, gazed through the veil of time, a vision unfolded before him, a sacred tableau, a revelation bestowed by Yeshua, himself a descendant of these historic fairs. With fragments of history lost to the rack of time, 
New truths emerged. The Igbo scorned, their lineage an uncharted chapter of Israelite ancestry, born from trials and tribulations. In the aftermath of exile, elders bereft of their land, children cast adrift, a dirge was sung, a lament for what was lost, yet within it burgeoned a hopeful refrain. As if upon the breath of God, a caravan drifted, celestial mandate as their compass. Over dunes of despair and through valleys veiled in secrecy they traveled, each weary footfall marking both an end and a beginning. Their exodus from a land that had forsaken them charted a course through winding sands and starlit passages, pulling them ever closer towards the heart of Africa, towards Nigeria, their destined solace. This was a tale untold, a history unrecorded. Yet Okori beheld in ethereal visions that which was never scribed upon parchment, pain and persistence bending together to fashion a relentless tapestry of survival. There, within Nigeria's embrace, these wayward descendants of Israel found more than just refuge. They found the groundwork for rebirth, a place whereupon the rich tapestry of their heritage could flourish anew, a testament to the indomitable will scribed within their souls. Their journey was a quest sown by destiny's own hand, a migrating constellation gliding across unfathomable distances, faces set against the firmament of skies foreign to their forebears. This was the story of resolute hearts braving the unknown. This was the saga of the Igbo people, heralded by Okori's trance, whispered by Yeshua, an odyssey marked by hope amidst sorrow that would one day tether past to present memory to flesh. As the memory of Egypt's pyramids gave way to the constellations that drew maps in the night sky, so too did Eri and his caravan venture into the vast unknown. From the ochre lands resplendent in the searing kiss of the sun to where the horizon bent in submission to the traveler's will, they journeyed with the heartbeats of the earth as their cadence. Across the Saharan embrace and beyond, they traversed territories colossal in their expanse, and unforgiving in their decree. Open, untamed lands that promised nothing yet whispered of everything. Through the endless stretches of sand, where only the mirage dares bloom, they discovered an oasis of resolve within themselves, survival, threading through each pulse in harmony with the shifting dunes. Weary limbs found solace in communal fireside respite, as tales of their ancestry fanned the flames higher, urging them on as much as daylight's inception. As they crossed from dune to grassland, and grassland to denser foliage, the caraval met other peoples. Tribes of vast diversity, some wary, some welcoming, but all adding stitches to the rich tapestry that was becoming more intricate with every mile overcome. The Igbo precursors traded, learned, and sometimes even loved, forging bonds that time itself would find arduous to unravel. When confronted with nature's furies, fiery droughts that desiccated the soul or torrents that threatened to steal their breaths, their will burjuned unassailable. Thunderous skis served as kettledrums to their perseverance as downpours baptized them in the resilience of forfeited theirs, and when hunger gripped their bellies and thirst parched their throats, each shared morsel was not mere sustenance, but communion, an affirmation of shared destiny and interlocked futures. Through such trials did Ares' lineage prove their worth under celestial scrutiny. Tarrying not in self-pity nor dalliance of doubt, they became sojourners of hope, vessels of a covenant renewed with every sun's rise. Ahead lay lands bereft of Pharaoh's lash, only the uncharted symphony of Africa's heartland, which they, with reverence and resolve, ever pursued. This odyssey of ages was not merely journey, but alchemy, transmuting chains of captivity into golden threads soared by faith. It was this, their epic quest, that foresaw the Igbo spirit's future bold as those very souls that melded survival into heritage across continent-spanning sojourns. Behold the Nile, ancient caretaker of civilizations, whose swatters curve through the land like the veins of life itself. Here upon its banks, Eri's caravan beheld a challenge, 
mighty and relentless, a watery titan that cradled life within its undulating embrace, its currents strong and treacherous, a leviathan guarding the gateway to the south. The crossing, more odyssey than endeavor, became a trial by water for the exiles who sought to claim their destiny on distant shores. They gazed upon the river not as mere pilgrims in awe of creation's work, but as travelers determined to overcome the very pulse of earth. They approached, their hearts resolute and eyes narrowed towards the horizon, where morning mist kissed the surface of the night. Crafted were vessels poorly hewn from memory's remnants of shipwrights past, their hands, roughened by the desert's touch and hardened by determination, worked to carve canoes from wood kissed by Nile's own mist. As the vessels were dragged to the river's edge, a hush fell upon the crowd, a single shared breath held between triumph and tragedy. The river roared, a behemoth's challenge, as they launched into the heart. With each oar's plunge, the river fought back, splashing, swirling, dragging at their resolve. But within each Igbo heart, ancient prophecies whispered fortitude undeclared by the tongues of men. Their will carved through the currents, like iron through air, defiant steeled, synchronized with paddle strokers that beat back fear with each ripple on the waders. For they knew well the art of perseverance. The calf that dances does not know that the ground belongs to the ancestors, and so they danced it atop the Nihilist surface as those who came before them had danced upon sands, upon rock, upon time itself. The crossing was not without sorrow. Some slipped beneath the gloaming surface into quiet sleeps. To the Nile they gave their flesh, but their spirit continued with the living. Each lost a scar upon the heart of the people. Each name would be carried upon whispers of the wind forevermore. Upon reaching the far side, drenched in both river and relief, they knew that this crossing was but one of many trials. But from this genesis by water, they drew a quiet strength, a testament that would echo through their bloodlines for generations to come. For in conquering the Nile, they conquered fear itself and their steadfast journey moved unswervingly southward, towards lands unknown but promised by oracles and dreams alike. Egypt's ancient sands dissipated in the traveler's wake as they journeyed into the verdant arms of Sudan, the solemn aria of Earth's primal whispers, their constant companion. In this heartland of Africa, history mutely bore witness to their passage, as if the very ground beneath their feet revered the covenant holders' strides. Where pharaohs once claimed divinity, here, under open skies, Ares people forged fellowship with the untamed spirit of the land. Wildlife, unfettered by man's snares, gazed upon this caravan, an oddity bound by faith, while towering baobabs stood sentinel their arched limbs casting transient day-shade for respite. Elders spoke incantations that melded with nature's chorus, seeking kinship with ancestral souls, carried upon the savannah's breath. While customs evolved amidst the melding terrains, soils diverse beneath their treading souls, the kernel of their identity remained untouched, unyielded. Sudan not only reshaped their journey's physical contour, within its embrace, cultural sinews flexed, stretching to encompass newfound experiences and etched them into immutable memory. Nightly encampments turned into kaleidoscopes of shared tales and dreams, aflame with aspirations as vibrant as the mosaic skies above their nightly haven. In this interlude between worlds, a rift yawned from Egypt's historical clasp. Ares' lineage communed with Africa's unfiltered essence. They drank deep from its gourd of mysteries, nourished by a continent whose rivers pulsed the rhythm of an ageless drum. Each dawn's broil and night's chill further annealed their resolve until resilience became second nature. Their pulse synchronized with Africa's primeval tempo. Through marshland and over craggy peaks, they trekked, with each ascended summit echoing a chorus of victory. Beasts once emblematic of distant savannas, 
now threaded stories into the tapestry of their odyssey. Lions became emblematic of their ferocity, gazelles of their grace under trial. Here in the bosom of humanity's dawn, they sowed the seeds for a tomorrow lush with potential, each step southward watering the future's fertile ground with sweat and determination. With the continent's core as firmament beneath their feet, they traveled forth, not as a caravan transient, but a lineage in Genesis, carving a corridor through time, fertile with legacy and lifeblood that would flourish far beyond mere circumstance. Their trek through Africa, a pilgrimage of myriad miles and countless suns, entered a chapter anew as the wandering children of Eri, born by the breath of prophecy, approached the confluence at Lokogia. Here, where the currents of the Niger and the Benue danced in harmonious embrace, a liquid tapestry weaved by nature's own delicate hand, the caravan glimpsed a horizon that spoke of permanence amidst their temporal sojourn, an intersection of fate and riverine serendipity undulated before them, marking the boundaries of an earth not simply to be trodden upon, but to be melded with the sweat and dreams of generations. The marvel of these converging waters was not lost upon those who had traversed deserts indomitable and jungles abyssal. They beheld Lokogia's expanse as more than the confluence of waters. It represented the confluence of past and future, of trial and triumph. It was here the very sinews of the earth stretched outwards, beckoning with tendrils palpable as the morning mist inviting them to lay claim to an unscripted destiny. These two rivers, coalescing in defiant beauty, presented the travelers with a choice, an opportunity to plant the flag of their lineage in a land brimming with potential, lush with prospects, ripe as the fruit of some primordial garden. Lokogia waited, still and expectant, for the footfalls of history's silent architects. It was a frontier where untold tales awaited telling, rich in resources and promise. The land, fecund and vast, was as an unwritten scroll yearning for their narrative. Throughout this expanse they roamed, surveying hills and dales, each step satiating the earth's hunger for identity, each breath infusing life into sediment, untouched by history's heavy hand. There, beneath a sky stretched taut across the dome of worlds, both lost and found, they made their covenant with the future, a pact sealed not in ink, which fades, but in legacy, which endures. As evening fell and twilight clung to the currents, they pitched their tents and kindled fires. The flames, flickering echoes of celestial bodies above, cast their hopes as golden shadows upon terra firma. Matched by the unyielding river's flow, their destiny now streamed forth clear and inexorable, towards an existence rooted in both their past travails and the anticipation of all tomorrows. Through a tapestry of time spun from the weary feet of a nomadic tribe, the children of Eri approached the promised cradle, Aguleri. As though divinity itself had sanctified this commune with the earth, they found solace in its embrace. The land, rich and fecund, whispered ancient harmonies as if it had been waiting, through centuries untold, to receive them. Here Ares' caravan, wearied by the epochs etched across their brows, dissolved their burdens into the welcoming soils. This soil, a tabula rasa upon which they inscribed their aspirations, their inspirations, their very essences, promised fertility of sustenance and legacy. As they built up their hearths with hands that bore stories of survival, the Igbo people laid down roots like the ancient Ukwu trees standing sentinel around them. Echoing the intertwining brashes were the narratives that would form the core of Igbo identity, for Eri had led them not just to a homeland, but to a haven for culture to flourish. Aguleri sprouted from a crossing of waters at Anambra's bosom. A settlement was established marrying the wanderer's spirit to the land's perpetual abundance. The Igbo began taming the wild lushness around them into forms of comeliness and utility. 
Fields were ploughed, seeds were sown, and a society was born from the virgin earth. Community courtyards rose from dust, meeting places where destiny's children would bond, sharing dreams, settling disputes, narrating epics of their own making. Within this newfound sanctuary, their customs crystallized like gems upon a crown, reflecting vividly Ares' vision, a vision of sanctuary for his lineage in the heart of an ancient continent. Under thatched roofs and within walls daubed with kaolin, tales unfurled, echoing through nights filled with the cricket's chorus and the elder's wisdom, they danced under moons crisp as harvest, to rhythms that told of their original exodus. Ares' odyssey, once whispered to winds that knew naught of his fate, now resounded through Aguleri's canopies as undying verse. Here was forged a nexus of past and future, an eternal font from which the Igbo could quench their thirst for belonging. In the verdant embrace of Aguleri's bosom, Within the symphony of the winds, the legacy of Airy finds its most profound resonance. A call across time to the Igbo, who draw life from soil rich with the stories of their forebearers. In this sacred space, rows of crops rise and fall like the chest of the earth in slumber. The land itself seems to breathe the heritage into existence. Here is where ancient traditions flourish amidst the sprint of modernity, where the echoes of Ares' Odyssey have set down roots, branching out into a vast cultural canopy that shelters a people both resilient and proud. The Igbo. Their lives a complex blend of ancient rites and the brisk tempo of today, stand as living monuments to Ares' relentless spirit. The arc of their history is written not only in scrolls or books, but etched in the soul of the community where every story told. Every dance step practiced, every cola nut offered in fellowship, serves to reenact the journey that brought them here. Through every weaving pattern of their renowned textiles, in each resounding beat of the Ikwe and within the chanted verses of the Abigbo, the legacy persists. It is not just a memory, it is an ever-evolving reality that reaches back through time to touch the valiant heart of Eri and all who walked his path. Eri's influence is omnipresent in Igbo life. From the reverence for ancestry to their society's social structures, which mirror a lineage of democratic governance and community cohesion. Their tales do not merely immortalize history. They offer wisdom, a guiding principle for present and future challenges. Igbo children, heirs to this bountiful legacy, are bequeathed a sense of identity both distinguished and profound. As they walk through fables reverberating with ancestral glory, they embrace their destiny to carry forth the flame of Ares' vision, ensuring it never wanes but burns brightly through time. Emerging from the heart of Aguleri, from the sanctity of a world built upon Ares' dreams, there sprouted a bitter chapter, a tale of indispensable souls ripped from a cherished embrace. The Igbo people once nurtured by the soft hands of freedom, found themselves entrapped, ensnared by an insidious shadow that draped the world in sorrow. The transatlantic slave trade, a phrase so vile in its essence, became the crucible through which an unmerciful force of darkness poured. The Atlantic Ocean, with its churning abyss, swallowed countless hopes and dreams, severing the continuum of a collective memory that spanned the expanse of Africa. This cruel journey, this vile passage, heralded an exodus far removed from the liberation that Ari and his kin had once celebrated. The westward-bound vessels were cramped, festering chambers of despair, stripping away human essence with every breath taken beneath the decks. The Igbo were a people of profound legacy, cast into the hulls of ships, their heritage teeming within them, compressed but not extinguished. Thrust into bewildering lands, they bore the burden of chains, yet within these very chains forged an unbreakable will. From Ares' pilgrimage bore a lineage that knew the pangs of longing, a connection to roots deep and sprawling. 
The diaspora, a term tepid in its description of the dispersion of lives scattered like seeds upon violent tides, encapsulated a forced severance from ancestral whispers. Yet cherished were the echoes of an Igbo past within the collected memory of a people resigned to fortitude. In the raw clasp of enslavement, Igbo descendants found wellsprings of resilience, sipping upon the aged wine of their identity to staunch the bleeding of cultural wounds. Through the chains and shadows, like Erie once traversed unknown horizons, his progeny too navigated tribulations vast and deep, across plantations and fields, beneath master's scourge and heaven's unforgiving eye, they summoned an inner airy, a spirit which could not be shackled, could not be tilled into the ground, nor dispersed by the wind. For within every cry for liberation, within every act defiance against the bonds that sought to define them, resonated the undying cadence of their illustrious forebearer, a testament to an unyielding spirit that refused to submit to history's cruel pen. African Americans, heritage underneath shackles, beneath the merciless sun of new worlds, African Americans carried the weight of a stolen past, a primeval connection to the ancient Igbo spirit strained under the lash of servitude. The agony of separation from their ancestral ground could not sever the inherent bond to Ares' bloodline, silent stories coursing through their veins, steadfast amid the clatter of chains. Bonds stronger than iron held their heritage together, pieced by whispered Igbo words that broke the hush of night, by syncopated rhythms echoing heartbeat drums from across the ocean, by customs and spirituality surreptitiously safeguarded. These remnants stood testament not only to the indomitable will of the captured, but also to their unwavering connection to something grander, a lineage dignified and regal under duress. Children born into bondage inherited more than the yoke. They inherited a history rich with the courage and determination of Ares' Odyssey. From calloused hands that cultivated foreign soils bloomed the resilience of an ancient people, whose tales of valor were etched into their souls, with each clandestine cultural rite passed from parent to child. Those enslaved could not have known the scope of their nascent legacy, yet they sowed the seeds of an Igbo renaissance on distant shores, sparks of freedom that no shackle could smother. In every step through fields of cotton, Every sorrowful yet soaring melody, every clandestine gathering under cloak of darkness, their actions became a defiant affirmation of identity, an unspoken proclamation that though torn from their homeland, they remained undeniably linked to the spirit of Erie and to an identity indestructible by time or trial. Upon the tapestry of time, intricately threaded and masterfully woven, are the myriad stories of a people shaped by history's relentless loom. The African-American Odyssey, a journey marked by sorrow and tenacity, harbors whispers of an ancient lineage, subtle yet resonant, echoing across generations. These echoes, carrying Hebrew heritage, permeate the very fabric of their identity, tracing back to the tales of Eri, the Igbo patriarch. The cultural tapestry reveals patterns similar to those found in distant Judean hills, spiritual practices endowed with communal resonance, family structures mirroring biblical ancestry, and oral histories evocative of Scripture's vast panorama. In the soulful laments of gospel choirs, in the call and response that spirit contemporary assemblies, one may discern a lineage that stretches beyond the temporal boundaries of historical documentation. These customs, intertwined with the collective memory of a fraught passage from Africa to America, bear witness to an enduring testament, one deeply ingrained with the rhythms and seasons of a past that defies the ravages of time and oppression. Moreover, in African-American communities, the celebration of life's milestones, the communal gathering at times of birth, matrimony, and repose, reverberate with the sanctity of ancient customs and laws. Even linguistic traces persist amidst daily vernacular, carrying echoes of Semitic origins, 
through the currents of language. Names bestowed upon progeny whisper of ancestral legacies, linking past heroes with modern bearers of hope and promise. It is through such delicate filigree that African Americans today hold fast to a narrative swollen with histories both imparted and intuited. Standing as living tributes to Ares' legacy, their story is a confluence of journeys, a shared memory spanning both Igbo and Hebrew descent, harmonizing within the melodies of faith and practice. Thus we find amidst the hardships endured and triumphs celebrated, a community bound by the golden cords of an ancient heritage, resiliently and vibrantly alive. In the heart of Nigeria, under a sky that has watched over millennia, the Igbo people stand a resolute testament to their patriarch, Eri. The soil whispers his name, the air carries his spirit, an ever-present guardian to those who trace their vigor to his ancient odyssey. They claim their identity with the might of the Niger, rivers ceaseless flow. There is no mistaking the profound pride resonating in their core. Their connection to Eri is more than a lineage. It is the rhythm of their dance, the melody in their song, and the fortitude in their narrative. With each new sunrise the Igbo claim grows more assertive, the shape of their birthright more defined against the backdrop of a questioning world. They do not wait for outside validation, for recognition is as inherent as the blood coursing through their veins. From spirited academics who delve into the depths of history to secure their forebears' place in its vast chronicles, to impassioned leaders who embolden their community to thrive in the face of modern adversities, their claim on Ares' legacy is unyielding. Their eyes gaze upon a horizon where the past graces the future, a vision steeped in reverence for traditions maintained and adapted over time. Embracing technology and new methodologies, they disseminate Ares' truths, intertwining threads of ancestral relevance with a global tapestry. To them, Ares is not just a figure confined by the annals of history, but a beacon that lights the way for future generations, a symbol of resilience, identity, and an undying attachment to their sacred heritage. Through festivals that ignite the air with vibrant hues and joyful exaltations, through scholarly pursuits that unearth forgotten connections, through the stories shared at communal gatherings and whispered to eager young ears, the Igbo continue to sow the seeds of recognition, planting deep within the earth their unwavering assertion. They venerate Eri not only with words, but with deeds emblematic of their ancestral narrative. In every aspect of their existence, they rise, proud descendants of a forefather whose story is ceaselessly woven into the very fabric of their being. And they rejoice, for theirs is a legacy etched into eternity. If you enjoyed this video and gained any value from it, please like this video, as it really helps spread awareness of this great story. It really helps the channel as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great stories of amazing people and majestic lands. Thanks for watching.